So one of the questions I think that many um, writers struggle with is this idea of the three-act structure. Now, in a simplistic, basic, um, universal way of thinking about story structure, you've got your act one, act two, and act three, beginning, middle, and ending. Now, this is a very basic way to think about story structure. And the truth is, truly great stories are far more complex than is indicated by that story structure, but they're complex for a different reason. And what happens is, as a, a, a writer is trying to learn how to put together a great story, one of the very first things you start to understand is how important story structure is and that what story structure is doing is, is ensuring the progression of your story. You've got a beginning, right? Um, in Act 1, it introduces your characters, in introduces the situation that's taking place and then moves, makes the story um, become more interesting and, and, and the, uh, the energy and the tension starts to build into what becomes an Act 2. And this is where most writers really struggle is Act 2 because Act 2 is about something very specific. But I'm not going to talk about that right at this moment yet. But Act 2 is what is traditionally known as the middle. And then Act 2, eventually, the tension builds so much, you get to the uh, climactic ending of your story as the uh, situation that's taking place and the, the character and the, all the different characters that are involved clash in, in a big ending. Now, this is a very simplistic, overly simplistic and basic way to think about and understand story structure. And what happens is as you start to study story structure and study the different information that's available, you'll start to be introduced to four-act structure or six-act structure, 12-act structure. Now, the flaw in all of these different ways of thinking about structure is that what all they're really doing is breaking up the different acts. They're taking act one and saying, well, there's three parts to act one. And they're saying, well, that's just three acts. And there's two parts to act two. So that's two additional acts. Now we have five acts. And then there's two, two parts to act uh, three or four, three parts to act three. So there's an additional, so we have a nine-act structure or 12 acts, whatever it is. But what they fundamentally are still doing is, is teaching just a more complicated um, version or more complex version of three-act structure. Whether You can call it whatever, how many acts you want to think about it. And the truth is, in my system, we, we teach very specifically that the best way to think about these standard structural components of a story called acts is an act one, act two, and act three. And as I've taught in other places, is the reason we think about act two is always just... An, Always just one specific act, and there are definitely two halves, absolute two halves to act two. And what happens is there are, there are experts out there, and there's information out there that says, well, there's act one, then act two, act three, and act four, splitting up act two. But the truth is when you understand what's going on in that middle segment of a story that keeps things interesting and keep things moving, you understand that act two actually can be repeated. So when there are certain stories, this is very common in episodic um, TV shows, where the beginning of a TV show, usually the, the pilot or the first episode is the equivalent of Act 1. And then if you were to jump to the last episode, uh, if it's a six or ten episodes, right, the very last one would be the, the, the climactic ending, or the, the last two episodes, the climactic ending and the resolution, that's Act 3. And then you've got a repetitive situation taking place, episode after episode 2, episode 3, episode 4, episode 5, and so on. Right? Each one of those are actually a repetitive act Two. So it's like Act 2A, Act 2B, Act 2C, Act 2D, and so on. And this is why it's really important to understand what actually happens in an Act 2. And everything in going on in a movie actually is framed around the midpoint of a story. Because what takes place at the beginning of a story, what starts at the, the beginning of a story, is a destination that the main character is trying to resolve the situation. So you've got the main character flows into the now, Right? There's a reality of that main character that flows into whatever is going to be taking place in the story you're telling. And then they converge with a situation, the plot it's traditionally called, that's going to make the whole thing interesting, make the whole reality interesting. It's the situation, the problem or opportunity that's taking place. And now they're going to try and resolve that, that situation. And the, the resolution of that situation actually doesn't take place at the ending. This is so important. The resolution of that situation takes place at the midpoint. The problem is it doesn't solve anything. The main character's got a, a pathway, a resolution idea, a way of dealing with the situation that's taking place, and they, they focus on that resolution specifically for the duration of Act 1 and until we get to the midpoint, roughly halfway through your story. And at the halfway point, whether they succeed or fail in whatever they were trying to do, they find out it was never going to work. This is sometimes called the false 
false victory. That's the concept of the false victory. Right? They were trying. They had a very specific way of dealing with whatever's going on, and it fails. The problem is there are certain stories in which there could be multiple false victories. Again, like I said, in TV shows. It also can happen in movies. The movie Armageddon has specifically a double act two. It repeats itself. I'm not going to talk about Armageddon right now. But getting back to the importance of three-act structure, when we use structure properly, we see that the story progression leads to that midpoint. And from that midpoint, the story actually progresses towards the climax and resolution. From the point, from the moment of that midpoint, the movie already now is now on the destination ending. So at the beginning of a story, it's destination midpoint. In a way, that's the first major act, if you will. And then from that midpoint, it's destination ending. In a way, the foundational real structure that's taking place is actually only two acts, not even three acts. And it's really critically important to understand this. But what's really going on in great stories is it's not just an act one, act two, and act three. There's two act ones and act two and act three going on in parallel. There is the life, the ongoing reality of your main character that's flowing into the now. They've got an act one, act two, and act three that's, taking, that's moving through your story. And then there's the situation itself that's been introduced in the story that's making your story so uniquely extraordinarily and, 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 and uniquely extraordinary and, and special and worth telling. This situation that converges with your main character at a very unique and a special moment in their own life. And that has its own structure in Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3. And understanding how to properly use your acts to create story progression on multiple levels. And that's why in my book, Your Storytelling Potential, we talk about this idea of A-B parallel structure. Because there are always two stories that each have their own structure, their own acts. You've got your B story, what I call the B story, the main character's ongoing reality that has three acts. And you've got your situation, whatever's taking place, that also has three acts. That's the A-B parallel structure. In my book, we, we draw it like this. Act one, act two, act three, with the situation here and the reality of your main character here. That's A, B, parallel structure. It's very important and critical to understand how to really, truly, correctly use structure with your stories.